All right, welcome back. Um, so, David, I um, we're talking about retailing and getting ready ahead of time and all that. So, the holiday season. Yeah, I, I actually this is this is my point, and we're talking about people being or companies being ready, and the holiday season for us. I mean, let's just skip the summer altogether because I mean, I I um, I don't know how much of a summer there's going to be a really summer season. I um, mean, you know, Prime Day is still happening, and I don't know. Yeah, but that's online with Amazon, and um, yeah, but that's a huge day. It's a huge day, but it's basically Prime Day. It's an Amazon thing that all the other retailers try to match, but it's a strictly online purchasing. My my prediction now, or my um, my thinking now is for okay holidays. for the holiday season. We have basically in the in the U.S. the holiday season pretty much starts right after. The well, I say Halloween, and we have five months for that. So every year, let me just give you my my thinking, and then you give me your opinion. So every year, all the retailers start planning right now what they're gonna have, basically, or through the summer they start planning uh, what they're gonna have, what package they're gonna have, what kind of sales, how much advertising they're gonna do online versus um, on site, basically at the retail stores what offers they have for Black Friday, which now starts like Thursday night, and then through the weekend, and then we have Cyber Monday, which is the online selling, and then it goes to Cyber Week, which is the following week and all that. So we know all the all the steps and all the uh, offers that have been taking place for the last few years and how much it has been expanded from, again, from being just basically Halloween weekend to, to or I mean, sorry, Thanksgiving weekend to um, through Christmas. But now we have a new situation. I think that the um, come Christmas time or come the winter, we're going to have a combination or after the fall, basically a combination of leftover coronavirus issues, which is not going to go away right away. We don't have a, a vaccine yet, so we're still going to be kind of cautious about that. And we're going to have a flu season that is normally in effect. So we're going to have two things combining then. If you go back and see how people were shopping, or we normally shop holiday season, you go to the stores, they are packed, we're looking for electronics and clothing and this, not to mention, you know, like Halloween, I keep saying Halloween, Thanksgiving, um, Black Friday, where people are lining up at the stores, doorbusters, everybody rushes through, no social distancing, nothing. So I don't think that's going to happen this year. And I think retailers need to start planning for that. And what is their plan B? Or how are they going to deal with the holiday season shopping? in the few, for for this year basically and uh, for them to say oh it's gonna be a disaster or something i mean last year was better but this year they need to plan ahead on plan b and c and d to see how they're going to deal with that so they can make up their numbers because if there's one season where they need to make up the numbers um black friday meaning going back to black numbers from red numbers throughout the year and this year they have red numbers already like way in the deep if uh, if they don't uh if they make it at all now they need a, a solid holiday season to make up for a bad year as far as retail goes or anything. I mean, it could be a travel hospital and restaurants, everything that we said. So what do you think, um, if you were to guess that it's going to happen differently this year when it comes to the holiday season, or how, I, I how should retailers I, approach it? I think for e-com, it's going to be massive because right now e-com is doing, I've seen tons of sellers uh, and brands doing every day for the month of April what they did on Cyber Monday and Black Friday last year, every day. Right. And so I think that we're going to see, if you're, if you're an e-com, I would expect, I think it's reasonable to expect that this year e-com sales will be at least, at least double what they were last year's Black Friday ceremony for a lot of the reasons that you're saying. But is that, are you talking e-com for people that only sell online or e-com for... E-com in general, basically. For companies like like a Walmart or something that have retail stores yeah, and them too. physical stores. Them too, yeah. So, so in that case, are, is there going to be like a if, shift? If you're someone and if you're a brand and you did a million dollars on Black Friday last year, then I would expect you to do two million on Black Friday this year. But is that in detriment or your... On-site sales? Well, it depends on the brand. Or is that additional? It depends if the brands right. sell in stores or not. Right. But I think basically Black Friday is still a predominantly retail event, okay? Exactly. E-com sales versus retail sales are not even close in the United States when it comes to Black Friday. I understand. I this know. year, that will be different. I would expect a massive, I can't guess this far ahead of time, 
what the percentages will be, but I would expect at least double the e-com sales this year than last year. Because of one, as we've seen, e-com's already grown basically 70% in the last six months. But on top of that, for all the reasons you mentioned, there's absolutely no way we're gonna have Black Friday door busters and shit like that that you said. Like, no way. They're right. gonna have hundreds of people lining up, so, malls packed. No way that's happening. So, exactly. All those so, people are gonna buy So, online. let me put you on the spot even more and, and right, ask you. No, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, let me ask you a typical uh, big box retailer um, Best Buy, for example. Okay. So, let's say that Best Buy is planning their. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, basically from Thanksgiving through Christmas sales, but specifically the three, four days between Thanksgiving evening, whenever they open these days and Cyber Monday and all that stuff. What will you do differently this year with, I mean, you need to start planning as soon as possible and then having like plan B, C, D, like I said, but if you were a CMO there saying, okay, this year guys is going to be different. We're going to have um, to plan this. Because you know the, 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 those you know, stores, they hire like they double the workforce at the store. Or more than that. They, yeah. yeah, exactly. They have a specific training. Yeah. Um, so Best Buy is uh, interesting because they actually do pretty well online, and they've been pretty ahead of the game as far as their uh, infrastructure goes, both combining digital and physical space. So they do a really good job of that, actually. Um, just off the top of my head, I mean, I would probably do curbside pickup or something like that. So basically, if you want to buy online and basically instead of having people wait in line on foot, have people wait in line in their cars. And then basically you pull up with your SUV or your truck or whatever and whatever you buy, your TVs, whatever, mm -hmm. the employees will load it in the back. You're good to go. You drive away. You okay. know, things like that. Um, I would do, I mean, you're. it's going to have to be you know, obviously for all the retail stores, they focus on the retail aspect much more than the e-com aspect. It's gonna have to be all digital focused. I would do lots of, I would anticipate lots of pre-sales, pre-raffles, pre, because pre pre, uh, I, I would do things like, okay, because how it works a lot of these retail stores is they the door busters, you know, they might have a hundred units per store in inventory. So the first hundred people get it, but then after that it's gone. So maybe instead of that, they could do online raffles or something like that, like a lottery, basically, like put in your email and maybe you're one of the hundred that gets it in your zip code or what, you know, think they, you have to get creative well, for how, sure. So, so let me ask you for, I mean, if you if a store like Best Buy, which we used to go a lot, um, and, and you like to go there and look at the things and touch and feel them, you know, test them, whatever. Right, but on um, Black Friday, you're not doing that. Well, not on, on Black Friday, Friday you're going in there, you know what you want. Right, and right. You're that's the, to see if there's anything that's the, the offers. But I'm talking more like the holiday season in general. Like, forget Black Friday now. Let's say that it's the, you know, the 5th of December or something, and you're buying for the holidays and you are shopping, typical shopping. You go to Best Buy, look for this game something and then you go to target and look at this thing it's, if it's cheaper or whatever you know you compare and you're kind of trying to figure out gifts for friends and you don't have an idea but you're looking around whatever so yeah do you go as far as doing a different layout of the store so given the fact that you may have to have limited traffic limited people at the store at a time which is happening already yeah. Home Depot right now. I mean, they they have a door to enter. No, I understand what you're saying. So, um, so do you lay it out differently? Do you basically maybe? Yeah, you, you know. the problem with Best Buy in particular, which is the same reason why Apple closed all their stores so early, is that people touch everything there. Exactly. So and they play and they touch remotes on the seat. I don't seat. know if they can just say no touching policy. Why would someone go there if you can't touch anything? Right. Um, Those are things that but I, I understand. It's, it's tricky, but they need to start thinking they, about that now. Maybe if I'm Best Buy, I supply everyone gloves. So you walk in the store and you have to wear gloves and then when you leave the store, you throw the gloves away. Or you have sanitizer so you touch. And, and then you say, okay, sanitize your hands, play your video game, sanitize your hands again and then even at the grocery stores now, they and wipe obviously off. Obviously, have employees just wipe their shopping down carts and all that. So, um, all that is a lot of planning. Yeah, I mean. obviously, that's very dependent on the type of what retailer it is. Like you said, clothing. Um, I don't know how you do that because okay, it's actually easier if you're Best Buy because you can just say, "All right, every time someone uses a tablet, wipe it down after." Okay, but with clothes, you can't do that. We might wash the clothes. You know, like what are you supposed to do? So, right, it's more tricky. Um, I don't have all the answers there. I'm I sure know. there's a lot of people in boardrooms discussing this.